Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 23rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today took a look at a sample of Bizarre Loader Mail Spam. These emails have a pretty wide variety of topics they're trying to use to trick the user into clicking on the link in these emails. He had, for example, Halloween parties, he had bonuses, and well, uh, some where you were actually fired. And all of these emails arrived to the same account in actually a fairly short sequence. But what's kind of interesting is also the variety of uh, the different cloud providers that were used to store the malicious links and uh, ultimately the documents. At the top of the list, uh, Google Docs and Google Docs remains very popular with malware distributors and uh, phishing sites to redirect users then to the ultimate malicious documents. Uh, Google, I talked about this before, appears to have a hard time countering uh, some of this abuse of its services. But there was also a new entry here that I haven't seen yet, and that was a link to a Slack. Now, as Jan investigated this particular link, it was no longer available, but uh, looks like they essentially just uh, used uh, Slack in order to then deposit the malicious file. Given the search, in popularity of Slack, that's not a surprise at all, really, and probably makes that link uh, quite appealing and trustworthy uh, to users. But uh, at least that's the first time I have seen it uh, being abused uh, to just store malicious documents. Let me have some new criticism regarding the secure boot mode in UEFI. Secure Boot has a very important function in that it only allows trusted operating systems to be booted on a protected system. The problem here is who decides what operating system is trusted. Ultimately, the keys for Secure Boot are with Microsoft. So in the end, Microsoft kind of has to approve an operating system in order for it to be signed for Secure Boot. Now, the way they have this set up is that there is a bootloader shim that is essentially then loading this third party operating system and a shim review board that will review operating systems for inclusion in that list of trusted operating systems. Usually not a real problem for sort of major Linux distributions and such, but some operating systems do have a hard time getting approved by the Shim Review Board. And that process apparently can take months at time, in some cases, then also delaying the release of patches for, for example, these operating systems own kernels and bootloaders. The only alternative is that the user just disables secure boot. Of course, no, that then removes this important security feature or that the user does upload additional certificates uh, to a secure boot. And now uh, this, of course, no, is probably the better workaround here, but it tends to be a fairly complex uh, procedure. And then, of course, uh, the operating system the user would like to load should be signed by the certificate authority for which the user uploaded the certificate. The Shim developer team is aware of the problem in particular in light of the recent boot hole vulnerability that of course these operating systems would like to fix. But at this point, there is no great solution in sight. And yes, this week we also got a long list of Cisco patches. I can only highlight a couple of them here. For example, an authentication bypass if you're using the common access card, CAC card for authentication that does allow access to the Cisco Firepower Management Center without any authentication. 
Secondly, there is a direct threat traversal vulnerability that affects Cisco Firepower Management Center as well, and Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, an exploit as Cisco state would allow the attacker to read or write arbitrary files on an SF tunnel connected peer device. Other than that, a number of denial of service vulnerabilities, some sort of the classic web application vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting and cross-site request forging vulnerabilities. And then, well, a sort of follow up on the last topic, also secure boot bypass vulnerabilities. In short, check with Cisco and you definitely want to patch your firepower software. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.